When we talk about lines in Sibelius, we're talking about the things you see around the music, not the notes and accidentals and stuff. More things like the slurs and the hairpins and the repeat endings and all the other sort of bits and bobs that go around music. So let's have a look at how you can access those and how you can use them. First of all, I'm going to be showing you this is um, just a piece that I wrote for my, some of my brass students to play. Um, it's a very straightforward wee piece. But I'm going to add some other information into it just for demonstration purposes. So let me zoom in to so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, first of all, I want to add some slurs in between some of these notes. Now, the long way to do that is to go to the Notations tab, as I have here. There's a slur there, so you would pick the note you want to slur from, click on the slur sign, and that will slur it over to there. You'll notice there's a wee handle there, a wee box. Now you could, if you want, grab that handle and move it if you want to extend the slur to other notes. You could if you want. It's not recommended. You'll also notice, if you look closely, let me zoom in a wee bit so you can see what I'm doing, that there are other handles around here as well. These allow you to grab that so you can reshape the slur to any shape you want. Why you would want to have that kind of shape is a complete mystery to me, but there you go. So I'm going to delete that just now, and I'm going to show you what is actually the much quicker way to do it if you're going to use slurs. Again, you select the note you want. Instead of having to find the Notations tab and remember where it is and all that kind of stuff, just remember the shortcut S for a slur. Now, if you want to extend it onto other notes, you can just use the spacebar. And that will take it on to the next note, and the next note, and the next note, etc. The way this, the shape that the slur takes is actually predefined by Sibelius, and they're 99% of the time they're absolutely fine, and they do not require any tweaking. So I really wouldn't bother, to be perfectly honest. Let me delete that one, and I'll show you another wee trick. If I want to slur, let's say this whole bar here, the second bar, I can select instead of there and then putting in a slur and extending it like so. What I can do is select the whole bar, type S, and the slur appears over the whole bar. That also applies obviously over multiple bars. So if I want to take a slur from there to there, let's say, I can click that note, shift click this note, so I'm extending the selection. Remember we've done that before. Type S and I have my slur. All very straightforward. Very similar to using slurs are using hairpins. Now, hairpins, if you're not entirely sure what the terminology means, are these things here. These crescendo and diminuendo lines that you have. And again, you can use them in exactly the same way. Select the note you want to start from. Click on the crescendo line. That appears there. You can then extend it using the spacebar in the same way as you did with the slur. If you want a diminuendo line, select where you want it to start. Use the wee drop down here and find the, diminu the decrescendo line and extend that using the space bar. The same rule applies as far as, whoops, as far as selecting an entire bar or more is concerned. I can select the, the whole area that the, slur that the crescendo is supposed to cover, select the crescendo and it will cover the whole thing. Similarly with the decrescendo, diminuendo, whichever you want to call it. There it's there. There is, of course, a keyboard shortcut. And if it's S for slur, it's naturally going to be H for hairpin. So there's my note selected. Type H. There's my crescendo. Extend it with the spacebar. For a diminuendo, it's not D, unfortunately. It is shift H. In Sibelius, shift tends to do the opposite. If you add shift to a shortcut, it tends to do the opposite of what the shortcut does. So H will add a hairpin, a crescendo hairpin. Shift H will do a diminuendo hairpin. And again, you can extend it. Or you can select a full bar and do either of those. And that will apply there as well. Let me just delete these out so you can see what I'm doing next. Now, I'm going to add a repeat sign here, 
So I'm going to select the bar line. I'm going to go to again to the notations tab, select the bar lines group, and I'm going to do a start repeat. This isn't technically a line, but it lets me show you what is a line. So if I go down here, there's this area here. So there, this light, this bar line here is going to be the end of the repeated section. So I'll put the end repeat. However, this bar here is the first time bar, and this bar here is the second time bar. And those are classed as lines, those brackets that you get over the top. Now, I could again go back up here and find them from down here. But the shortcut to get to that for lines is L. So there's how you can access that dialog box very quickly. So for example, I'm going to select this bar here. And I'm going to type L. Brings up the, the dialog box. There's my first and second time endings. Click on the first time ending. Sibelius tends to overshoot the, the end of the first time bar, tends to overshoot the edge of the bar. Not entirely sure why, to be perfectly honest, but the way around it, if you want to avoid that, is not to select the whole bar, like so, but to select the contents of the bar. So, for example, you select the first note and then the rest, not the end of the bar. Type L for lines, first time ending, and there's your first time ending. And again, as we handle there, if you want to tweak exactly where it finishes, you can do that. Second time bar is much more straightforward. Select the bar, type L, second time ending, job done. The beauty of this using these lines is that Sibelius will play back the first and second time. So the first time through it will play first time bar and jump back up to the repeat. Second time through it will miss the first time bar, jump straight to second time bar and carry on. If you're writing for piano, which of course many of us do, another line that is very useful to be aware of is a pedal line. So for example, and it works in exactly the same way as almost everything else I've been doing. So for example, if I take this bar, let's just highlight the whole bar on the left hand, type L for lines, scroll down and there are my pedal markings. So you, this is where the pedal is on, this is where it stops, and your various other markings. So I'm just going to do this one here. And there's my pedal marking. And again, the beauty of this is, is it plays back. Have a listen to this. So you hear the pedal being held down over there. Sometimes, if you're writing for instruments, if I was writing this, for example, and it was um, an octifier, I wanted it to sound up there, but the player's not comfortable reading up there, sometimes it's more preferable to put an octave line. So again, I could select the, the notes that it's going to affect, type L for lines, and there's my octaves and two octaves up or down. So again, I can do that there. And that, again, that will play back. So there's my... Also, again, any um, ornaments that you want to use that are lines tend, will play back as well. So, for example, if I want to select this note here, if I let's just select the full note, L for lines, there's a trill line I could use, for example. And, guess what? It plays back. So you see that there are a lot of lines that are very useful things to be aware of. The last one I'm going to show you, I'm going to scroll right down to the end. And I'm going to take um, these last three bars here, like so, type L for lines. Because further down here, you'll see there's a written Excel there. If you scroll down this list, you see there's many more writs in Excel. And these are called these are te technically called lines in Sibelius. So what I'm going to demonstrate with is a multi writ. And then it's there. And I'm just going to open up the transport panel just so you can see what's happening because of course this area here is the playback speed. So for example from the second time bar I can play from there. Just keep an eye on this wee number here.
It's always a wee bit too slow. I'll probably be better for that case to do a writ rather than a multi writ. But you get the idea. So that's how you can very quickly and easily use lines in Sibelius, and it's all from under one single shortcut, the letter L for lines.